Addicted doesn't even begin to describe the relationship I have with this game. I jump from level 60 to 200 in one day, I finish the first region's main story quest and several side quests, I peaked at rank 20 in the dream arena, and this is what my roster looks like, I got this skin, I got that skin, and I don't even want to talk about that skin. So you can obviously tell I've poured insane amount of hours into this game and its lore of course. So imagine my joy when Lilith Games and AFK Journey knocked on my door to offer a sponsorship for today's video. This video is sponsored by AFK Journey, an all-new ethereal fantasy RPG crafted by Lilith Games and is a successor of the beloved AFK Arena. It's available on PC and mobile across various countries and regions and you can download the game for free using my link in the description and pinned comment. This video will go over the world-building lore of AFK Journey as well as a recap of the Raiham Tales, the entire first act of the main storyline. We'll also talk about some theories I have regarding our mysterious protagonist. I'm your leafy lore Shiri Menzliff and I read the AFK Journey lore so that you don't have to. Thank you so much again AFK Journey and Lilith Games for sponsoring today's video. The story takes place in a land called Asperia and it's your job to guide the six factions to their destinies. Those factions being the Lightbearers, Wilders, Maulers, Graveborn, Hypogeans, and Celestials. The Lightbearer Empire is where the start of your journey takes place. It's divided into the countryside of Raiham, the ancient ruins of Remnant Peaks, and the capital city Hollistone. The citizens of the Lightbearer Empire worship the god of life, Dura, whose statue you can see in Hollistone. The Lightbearer faction also consists of the Heroic Order, essentially the police force of the Empire, the Mithril Consortium, an association responsible for trade and commerce in the Empire, and the Serene Lyceum, the Magic Academy. It was at this Magic Academy where the most powerful mage in the land once taught. This magister's name was Merlin. Merlin is you. Before we dive into that and potential theories I have for this Merlin, let me quickly summarize the other five of the six factions. The Wilders worship the god Misarte and hold a magical connection with the forest and the Lucent Tree. There's a special category of Wilders known as Wind Whispers who have the extremely rare gift of being able to control the wind. They make up one of the Dark Forest's ruling bodies, the Wind Faction, messengers and essentially the Intelligence Bureau of the Dark Forest. The Wind Faction, the Dusk Patrollers, and the Thorned Guards unitedly rule the Dark Forest. But lately, there seems to be unrest and power imbalances running amok. The Maulers are a warrior culture who pride and value themselves in strength. Historically, the Maulers have been kind of a neutral party, but most align themselves with the Lightbearers, but with some defecting to the side of evil. The Graveborn are undead beings who seek immortality through the dark arts and necromancy. They are natural enemies of the Lightbearers and are currently one of the antagonistic factions of the story. The Hypogeans are historically the main villains of AFK Arena, Journey's predecessor, and may serve the same role in Journey's story. Their main goal is to destroy any of Dura's creations by spreading evil all across Asperia. In opposition to the Hypogeans are the Celestials. The Celestials are godly beings whose main goal is to destroy the Hypogeans and any remaining darkness plaguing Asperia. Naturally, they side with the Lightbearers. The lore behind the factions is directly reflected in the game's faction advantage system, in which the Lightbearers have an advantage over the Maulers, the Maulers have advantage over the Wilders, the Wilders have advantage over the Graveborn, and the Graveborn have advantage over the Lightbearers. Celestials and Hypogeans are resistant and effective against each other, symbolizing the good old timeless struggle between good and evil. Now I'll summarize the first act of the main storyline, Ryum Tales. So be warned, this will contain spoilers about the plot twists that happen before you reach a dark forest. Your journey begins in the Lightbearer Kingdom. You are Merlin, a mage who is all-powerful and renowned, but also suffers from a severe case of amnesia. Merlin seems to have completely forgotten their identity and requires the help of their furry familiars to remind them. Apparently, this magical dementia is a rather common occurrence as people around them don't seem surprised at the sudden memory loss. The countryside of Raiham is divided into Northville and Southville, and Merlin wakes up to a fire happening in Northville. This fire is blamed on the Scarlet Sorceress Muriel, who's later taken into custody. There's extreme tension between Northville and Southville. Southville has recently gotten extremely rich due to the sales of a new variety of grapes called Gem Vine Grapes, and this newfound wealth has caused jealousy and resentment from Northville. But jealousy isn't the only thing Northville has been dealing with. Long ago, Merlin placed a ward over Ryham to keep the countryside in an eternal state of autumn, both beautiful and bountiful for the land. But recently, Ryham has been dealing with an inexplainable winter that keeps getting worse and worse. 
Not only that, but crime has risen in the areas with Gruglins and bandits getting more and more aggressive. All of these problems stem from one catalyst event. This new variety of grapes that made Southville rich have been introduced to Ryham by a man named Lord Franz. Merlin and their group infiltrate a fancy banquet held by Lord Franz to celebrate the economical success of his gem vine grapes. But their plans to investigate Lord Franz are interrupted when an evil beast known as a hypo fiend crashes the party. The group is rescued by none other than Muriel. It's here they discover that the reason behind Ryham's weather anomaly and the increased violence in the area is those darned grapes. The gemvine grapes that Lord Franz made Ryham plant were imbued with corruption, which disturbed the magical balance of the land. This disturbance has caused the extreme cold weather that's been plaguing Ryham. The grapes also seem to have an equally negative effect on people. This corruption manifests as mind control for anyone who consumes them. Grapes capable of climate change and mind control. I gotta give it to him though, Lord Franz is kind of smart. He orchestrated a grand banquet and invited the most influential people of the land to drink up some cursed mind control grape juice. Lord Franz was also the one responsible for hiring mages from a nefarious organization known as the Adamant Syndicate to set Northville on fire to pressure them into planting grapes. This means Muriel was innocent the entire time. She reveals herself to be a student of Merlin long ago and to this day has still remained loyal to her forgetful magister. Muriel also reveals that Merlin didn't place a ward over Ryham, it was a seal. Merlin was trying to keep something from escaping into Ryham. This leads to the sinister discovery that not only were those grapes cultivated to control people's minds, they were made to weaken the seal that Merlin had placed to protect Ryham. If this seal were to break, all of the Lightbearer Empire's magical balance would be thrown completely off and the evil Hypophenes and Hypogeans could leak into the land. Merlin restores this seal but the problem remains, with Merlin having been gone for decades allegedly, evil is spreading everywhere. And the the culprit behind everything might be the Adamant Syndicate and a mysterious woman named Lady Elusia. The group head to the Dark Forest and thus concludes Act 1 of AFK Journey's main story, Ryan Tales. But what's the deal with Merlin? What's with the magical memory loss, being gone for decades, all the while still possessing a good amount of their immense power? I think the answer to this might be found in the game's very first cutscene. The game opens up with hooded figures lifting up the same sword from the ground. My theory is that these are Merlin's past lives. I think when people assume that Merlin can change forms, it's merely because Merlin has quite literally been reborn in a new body instead. I think this is why their memory loss seems so commonplace, and I believe that Merlin's showcase of abilities in the story are simply their memory of a spell from their previous life. Now as for why Merlin keeps getting reincarnated, that I'm not sure yet, but I'm pretty sure that opening sequence was a massive hint at Merlin and their identity. If not reincarnation, there might be something sinister Merlin is hiding. The only other being in AFK journeys so far that can change their appearances are Hypophenes, which is why when you level up, the Hypophenes you fight take the form of playable characters. It's a fact that Valen warns us about in the beginning of the game. This is just a theory, but Merlin could have an origin that stems from the Hypophenes or worse, the Hypogeans. During the official release, AFK Journey will give away more than 40 heroes of all qualities including epic heroes for free, allowing players to experience the full range of combat strategies at no cost. AFK Journey will also be giving away all the heroes. You heard me. All the heroes. Gradually. And by logging in for 7 days and participating in various events, players can get 200 plus draws for free. Thank you so much again, AFK Journey and Lilith Games for sponsoring today's video. Now, please excuse me while I go <clears throat> AFK some more. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. I'm your Leafy Lord Shearer Mensliff and I read the AFK Journey lore so that you don't have to.